Hello and welcome back to CSS3 Animations. Now that we've got a pretty good foundation on how to animate using CSS3, I want to talk about how to do something a little bit more complex than what we've been doing so far. Now if we take a look at this test file here, it's going to be easier to show you what I'm trying to do than it is to explain it. So I'll just show you. Let's take a look at this settings button at the very top. Whenever we hover over this button, several things are going to happen. The background is going to brighten up a little bit. So we're going to have that background color changing. The icon on the left is going to expand, grow, and disappear. But there's going to be another icon, another image just like it beneath it that's going to be somewhat transparent. And then the text itself is going to animate up. And then another piece of text is going to animate in. So we have several things going on all at once. Let's hover over the button and watch it. Okay, so it all happens pretty quickly. Uh, we see this extra piece of text come in, comes in from the side uh, after everything else is animated. So we saw the, the word settings animate upwards, and then after a slight delay, this text below it, customized profile, animated in. So in this video, I want to get that delay working. We're going to talk about how to create a delay before our animation takes place. So again, Let's uh, demonstrate again on the second button, events. So we're going to see that the events text move upwards, and then after it moves upwards, we're going to see another piece of text come in. So that second piece of text has a delay set on it so that it doesn't come in until after that first animation is finished. So again, we'll hover over that. Events moves up, and then view calendar moves in. So again, there's a slight delay before that second piece of text animates in. So again, in this video, we're not going to do everything that we see here. We're going to get the text to work first. I want to talk about this delay concept. So let's jump into our lesson eight file. As we can see, we have all of the text in place, but it looks kind of cluttered. But what's going to happen here is the larger text here is going to move up a little bit before the smaller text moves in. So the smaller text is actually in the right place, even though it's kind of butted up against the larger text. Uh, the smaller text is in the right place for its ending position, but the big text is going to move up before that small text comes in. So let's take a look at our HTML and see how this is constructed. Let's jump into our text editor, and I'm going to jump into the index.html file. So underneath the unordered list for our social media icons that we created earlier, we have a series of anchor tags. So these are just simple text links, but we've given them a class of button. And that class of button is what gives it its basic look and feel. That's what gives it the blue background with uh, the slightly beveled look with the border around the edge and the uh, drop shadow behind it. Now this bevel, this little highlight in the upper left on the top and on the left side where it looks a little bit brighter, it looks like it's beveled, that's created using a shadow as well. If we jump into our code, go to our CSS3 animation and scroll down to the big buttons section of that CSS file. For our button under the box shadow property, we have two different box shadows that are being applied. The first box shadow here is just a shadow that appears below and to the right of the button object. And it's a light gray shadow. And that's this button below and to the right of the object. But we see we also have this second shadow applied to it, and it has a class or an attribute of inset added to it as well. That inset attribute sets it up as an inner shadow. And our inner shadow, we've given a light, light blue color so that when we see it, it looks like a bevel. So it's just a nice little detail that you can add in CSS, and I like the way that looks. Uh, so if we go back here, we can see in our HTML that we've given that anchor a class of button, and that's what gives it that blue background and the darker blue border and the shadows. Uh, the rounded class gives it the rounded corners, etc., etc. And then inside that anchor tag, we have an image, which is this icon here on the left side of the button. And then after that image, we have two spans. We have a span with a class of big text, which is the big text at the top. 
and then a span with a class of small text which contains the smaller text below it. So all of that is contained within an anchor tag and then in our CSS, uh, this anchor tag has a class of button to it. So that's where we give it that light blue background color. We've given it a border around the edges and we've also given it an overflow of hidden, which is very important to what we're going to be doing. Giving it that overflow of hidden, make sure that if anything inside this anchor tag moves outside the boundaries of that button, it will be hidden. We won't be able to see it. And that's very important because remember, this small text down here at the bottom is going to be outside of that button to start with and then it's going to animate on. So when it's outside the button, we don't want to be able to see it. We want it to be hidden. So again, it's very important to set your overflow for that button to hidden so that anything that moves outside of it, we won't be able to see it. Also, for the image inside that button, we've given it a position of absolute and a top and left value. And that's what positions it where it is located inside the button. So in order for that to work, in order to give it a position of absolute, we have to give the parent element a position of relative. So that's why that has a position of relative. So that when we make this position absolute, this top left value here, we'll put it six pixels from the top of that button and eight pixels from the left side of that button. Also, we have some properties applied to the span tags within the button. Those span tags have a color of white. They both have a text shadow applied to it. Both the big text and the small text have a, that text shadow applied to it. Text, text decoration of none so that it doesn't have an underline. And again, a position of absolute because we want to control exactly where that text appears inside this button. So we haven't set the top and left position inside this particular rule, but we've set the position to absolute so that inside the rules for the big text span and the small text span, we can then set the top, and in this case, the right position of uh, that text. So for the big text, we've given it a font size of 22, a top position of 25, so it's 25 pixels from the top of the button, and 20 pixels from the right edge of the button. The small text, we've given a font size of 14, a top position of 40 pixels, and right now we have a right position of 20 pixels, but that's not exactly where we want it right now. Right now, we don't want it to appear within this button at all. We wanna shove it off the right edge of that button so that we can't see it. And we're gonna do that by setting our right property here to a negative value. So I'm gonna set it to negative 200. We'll save that. And then when we refresh our browser, we'll see that that text moves off the edge of that button so we can't see it anymore. So it's over here to the right of the button. And then when we animate it, that text will move in. So let's talk about how to animate this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate the big text and the small text and the small text is gonna have a slight delay before it animates in, so it will animate after that big text moves up and out of the way. So for the big text, let's go ahead and do that one first since we already know how to do this one. We'll set transition equal to all, so any transitions we apply to it will have these settings. It's gonna last 0.3 seconds, and we're going to apply an ease function to it. So what do we want that span to do? What do we want that big piece of text to do? We want it to move up whenever we hover over the button. So we'll go to the next line after that rule and we'll create a new rule for dot button colon hover. And when we hover over that button, we want the span with a class of big text, oops, span dot big hyphen text, there we go. We want that span to animate to a new setting. We want to change the top value of that text. So I'm gonna set the top value. We're gonna move it up 10 pixels. So we're gonna set it to 15 pixels. So let's just make sure that's working. Let's save our file, refresh our browser. And when we hover over that, we see that text moves up. Okay, so we've got step one down. Now let's get the other text to move in. Let's jump back into our file. And uh, since we know this is already working, let's go ahead and copy it, paste it three times, and put our vendor prefixes on it. MOZ, 
and then for opera okay so that's working that's fine now let's do the same thing for the small text so after the small text rule we'll skip a couple lines put dot ooh, there we go button colon hover space span dot small text so this is what we're going to do to the small text whenever we hover over the button that is its parent element and what we're going to do here is we're going to set the right property to 20 pixels so that's going to be the ending location of it uh, but we need to create the transition as well so back up here inside the small text rule we're going to create that transition so for now i'm going to create it to look just like the other transition so we're going to set it to all 0.3 seconds and we're going to use the ease function so let's see if that works let's save that go into our browser refresh and now when we hover over it it works and it looks fine but it's happening at the same time as our other animation what i want to happen is i want that blog text to move up and then once it's done moving then we can bring this other piece of text in so the way we do that is we set a delay so let's jump back into our code and talk about how to do that uh, first of all let me point out if we were typing out each of these transition property properties separately so if we had uh, transition hyphen property and we were setting that equal to uh, right because we're moving the or we're changing the right property and then we had transition hyphen duration and then we'd set that to 0 0.3 seconds and then we also have the transition uh, timing function and we'd set that to ease if we wanted to create a delay before this particular transition started we would simply set transition hyphen delay equal to 0.3 seconds or however long we wanted that delay to be so then it would wait 0.3 seconds before it would create that animation well with our shorthand here it's even easier all we have to do is to create our delay after the timing function so after we have ease there we'll type 0.3 seconds again so this first 0.3 is how long that transition is going to take to occur and this second 0.3 seconds is how long of a delay we want before that transition actually starts so let's save that and see if it worked go back to chrome refresh our page and now when we hover over that button the settings text moves up and once it's done the customized profile text moves in below it so that second piece of text the smaller text there has a delay before that animation even begins so we'll just make sure it works for the rest of these and it does it looks really good so in the next video we'll finish filling out this button and creating some really cool effects with it so now that all of our work is saved we'll move on to the next video thank you for watching